Welcome everyone. And thank you for joining us today for this Facebook Live event sponsored by New Jersey Citizen Action and Families USA to discuss the urgent need to lower prescription drug prices as part of a robust Build Back Better package. As people all across the South and the East, including so many here in New Jersey, deal with the remnants of Ida, Congress will begin debating what may be the most consequential legislation in a generation, a $3.5 trillion package that will provide greater access to more affordable health care, add dental, hearing, and vision benefits for our seniors in Medicare, close the Medicaid coverage gap, giving health care access to three to four million low-income men, women, and children in the 12 states that have refused to expand their Medicaid programs under the Affordable Care Act. And there is much, much more. But the reality is if we can't get Congress to raise taxes on the rich and corporations at the scale we need and to allow Medicare to directly negotiate with pharmaceutical companies on the price of prescription drugs, we will not be able to get these important healthcare and other supports that millions of low and moderate income working families need in the Build Back Better package. President Biden has proposed a series of common sense and fair tax increases, including partly restoring the corporate tax rate that was cut under the Trump administration from its current 21% to 28%. In addition, he's proposed other changes to the tax code that will extract more revenue from wealthy families and investments making the tax code more fair for everyone. Just as important is allowing Medicare to negotiate drug prices, something we are currently prohibited from doing, and making those negotiated lower prices applicable to everyone, regardless of whether you get your health plan through an employer or purchase it on your own, everyone will save money at the pharmacy counter. The billions in revenue generated by these changes will pay for these critical investments that many are referring to as the human infrastructure package. The high cost of prescription drugs is crushing New Jerseyans. Chances are, if you are listening to this today, you know someone who is struggling with the cost of the prescription drugs. According to a recent report, by our partners and sponsors of this call today, Families USA, nearly one in four people in New Jersey report not filling or taking a prescription as directed because they can't afford it. And we all know drugs don't work. People cannot afford them. Not only will Pre President Biden's Build Back Better tax and investment plan provide direct relief to families it will finally hold pharmaceutical companies accountable for excessively high pricing that has resulted in the U.S. paying more for our drugs than any other nation <clears throat> in the world. That is why New Jersey voters and stakeholders like New Jersey Citizen Action and our partners on this call are urging House and Senate members to add their support for this robust plan. Today, you'll hear from a small business owner, a healthcare provider, and advocates who are speaking out on behalf of themselves and members of some of the communities most impacted by excessively high drug prices. We thank you for joining us. And now I would like to turn it over to our first speaker and introduce to you New Jersey business owner, Trent Oliver, who is the principal and managing director of Blue Telescope and a Small Business for America's Future Network member. Trent? Hi, uh, nice to meet everybody virtually. Um, Blue Telescope, we've been in business 21 years. And at the very outset, I decided that all employees should have 401k, everybody has to have health insurance. 
Um, I want employees to go to the doctor, take care of themselves, can be with us for the long run. Um, I have very severe asthma and it's been a battle my whole life to make sure I have health insurance. And even if, you know, I remember in California, I used to go down to Mexico to go buy my medicine because I couldn't afford it. Well, now I own a company and we provide health insurance that isn't very good, even though we're doing our best. I mean, we're providing, you know, for $500 a month for everybody, and that doesn't do anything anymore. Um, and I had to talk to AstraZeneca to get on their low copay for uh, injections that I take. That's nuts. At this age, I should be able to just go ahead and get the medicine I need. Everybody should. Um, we don't, small businesses, we don't have the clout. We can't negotiate. Um, we're just kind of left behind and we're really an engine. We're the engine that makes everything grow. And we have to have, a, we have to take care of our people. It's just the right thing to do. And more and more, we're looking at other ways. We're probably going to ACA, which is crazy. We need to be able to, you know, we want to spend the money. We want to do the right thing, but it feels like a giant game where we can't, we can't cut a break. I can keep going if you want. Thanks so much, Trent. Uh -huh. we, we appreciate that. And, and please stick with us as we'll have some questions for you at the conclusion of other remarks. Um, but now I'd like to introduce Dr. Ann Bagchi, um, who is chair of the Latino Action Network Health Committee um, and has a lot of experience uh, having been a frontline worker on the impact that high drug prices have on those with chronic disease and within the Latino community. So, Anne? Thank you, Maura. Um, the Latino Action Network supports the principle of health as a human right and has called on all local, state, and federal governmental agencies to declare racism as a public health crisis. The US healthcare system has been built through structurally racist policies, including those that support current prescription drug pricing. Having prescription drug coverage is meaningless if essential medications remain unaffordable. As a family nurse practitioner and the mother of a young cancer survivor, I've seen firsthand the economic and emotional turmoil families face in affording essential healthcare. Latinos are more likely than non-Hispanic whites to live with common medical conditions such as diabetes, high blood pressure, and obesity. Bowing to lobbying from drug, drug companies, the US healthcare system has created an over-reliance on prescription medications to manage these and other chronic health conditions. An initiation of drug treatment often sets off a cascade of over-prescribing as new drugs are added to a patient's regimen to manage the side effects of previously prescribed medications. Recent data indicate that nearly 18% of Latinos in the US are currently taking four or more prescription medications. Since Latinos are more likely than non-Hispanic whites to be uninsured or to work in low wage jobs with inadequate health insurance, current prescription drug pricing policies can initiate a vicious cycle of worsening health disparities. People without prescription drug coverage do not benefit from drug rebate programs and estimates suggest that 24% of insured low-income Americans have skipped medications or doses due to high out-of-pocket costs. When people are forced to pay for housing or food or needed medical care, they suffer declining health and missed days of work, which worsens economic disparities. In this way, current drug pricing policies serve to perpetuate health disparities among people of color. The Latino Action Network calls on Congress to overhaul prescription drug pricing to expand access to affordable prescription medications. We also call on greater investment and research that will support value-based formularies and will provide evidence for the efficacy of naturopathic and alternative therapies. Finally, we call on leaders at all levels of government to apply a health equity lens to all policy decision-making to break down the structural racism, racism that undergirds our healthcare system. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I will now pass the mic over to Dr. Anjali Gupta. Hi, um, I'm Dr. Gupta. I've been in practice in many different settings for over 25 years. 
Coming out of training, I knew I would offer encounter illnesses that I would not be able to treat and cure. But I did not expect to face this problem when the cures and medications are plentiful and should be easily available. I had no idea I would be spending as much time as I do now, literally sweating each day as I jump through hoops to try and get my patients life-saving and essential medications that should be cheap and affordable. Myself, my residents in training, and my office staff spend a significant portion of our day trying to find a loophole, such as looking for the rebate, using GoodRx, locating a different pharmacy, convincing the drug rep to give us samples, or trying to have the patient change their insurance that will allow us to get our patients drugs they need. Um, hearing Trent uh, share her story, you know, is just very reminiscent of the, of the challenges we face every day. And I'm not even referring to the super expensive cancer or rare disease treatments, nor am I referring to the newest drugs just off the pip pipeline that are endlessly advertised on television as requiring only a conversation with your physician to get. I am referring to basic treatments for diabetes, such as insulin and inhalers, um, and treatments for asthma, such as inhalers, which have been around for decades. And there are too many times when we can't get the drugs. You see the devastation on the face of the patient as they look at look to you asking, what are they supposed to do? So we watch them as they ration their insulin and the use of their inhaler, living with a new baseline of acceptable wheezing and shortness of breath, or knowing that they are setting themselves up for a stroke or a heart attack because of their uncontrolled diabetes. We watch them go in and out of the emergency room to treat their asthma attack for a glucose of above 100. And being sick also then means they miss work and drugs become even more affordable because they can't pay for them. It is a, Christ, a crazy cycle and I shockingly deal with this every day and it's heartbreaking. Coming out of training, I, um, sorry, I am often dumbfounded by the realization that I need to, I've um, had the fortunate opportunity to, to do a lot of work abroad. Um, I am often dumbfounded by the realization that I need to use the same strategies to get my patient life-saving essential drugs in my practices here in New Jersey as those that I've used when I work in the slums of Haiti, one of the poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere. We are the richest nation in the world, yet I need to resort to standards published by the WHO on how to treat diabetes, which were set in order to accommodate drug availability in the poorest countries in the world. I am unable to get an asthmatic patient an inhaler here in New Jersey in the same way that I am unable to get an asthmatic patient an inhaler in the slums of Haiti. And I can't comprehend why this has to be. So I urge you to allow Medicare and other payers to negotiate prices. Every person has a right to health and life. Um, not, to, not to speak to the exorbitant healthcare costs that, um, you know, exist here in the US and our outcomes do not come anywhere near to uh, reflecting the amount of money that we spend. I wanna add real quick, the thing that blows my mind is as a country, we're not playing the long game. It would be significantly more cost-effective if we took people who had chronic illnesses, treated them on an ongoing basis, gave them regular medication instead of relying on them to go to the ER, get hospitalized. Financially, it's a stupid of us. Um, and when my mom passed, we hoarded her inhalers. That's crazy. You know, we keep them past the expiration date because, oh, I might need it. Um, you know, we shouldn't have to do that. Absolutely. Thank you all for, for your comments. Um, we have just a few questions. Um, wanted to follow up on some of the things that, that you said and talked about. Um, specifically, Trent, um, what would it really mean to you as a small business owner and your employees um, if prescription drugs were more affordable every month? What would actually be the impact? We could be more cost efficient we could make sure that everybody's covered. I mean, we're spending the money, but like this year, all my employees are saying, well, I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't work. 
the insurance doesn't work, the prescriptions aren't covered. Um, we will go up against companies in Europe and Europe is more expensive, but they don't have to provide, they don't provide health insurance for their employees. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how they can outprice us. Mm -hmm. And it's like this, I, um, it would be great. I would love it if health care were not on a business level and up to each business owner, because that's silly. But if it is, if I get a running start, at least for with the big companies or other countries, um, it has to be more affordable. So in because, essence, it would make small businesses like yours more competitive. More competitive, able to hire more people. And I cannot bring myself to the point to say, oh, well, we don't cover, cover, uh, offer insurance. That's mm -hmm. wrong. I really think that's wrong. Yeah. It's sad that you or as a business owner or Anjali or uh, Dr. Bagchi as providers would be in a situation where you would have to tell anyone that, as we said, in the richest country in the world. Um, we know that uh, from the comments that we've heard, um, Dr. Bagchi and um, uh, Dr. Gupta, um, that the high cost of drugs is exacting uh, a disproportionate impact in communities that are historically underserved, in communities of color. It is truly a health equity issue. Um, and we know that it's prescription drug costs are consistently one of the top issues for Americans with uh, recent uh, polling telling us nine out of 10 voters want Congress to take action. I would just ask each of you, um, how important is it uh, to you personally that Congress take action on this issue to lower prescription drug prices now? Um, maybe we can first go to um, Dr. Bagchi. Sorry. Um, so in my family, personally, we don't take medications. So that's not something that affects me personally. But in the patients that I, that I treat, as well as I do a lot of work um, in the area of, of HIV. And that's a condition that these days is completely controllable but it requires people to be on their medications, on their antiretroviral medications very consistently. If people could stay on their medications, um, we could essentially wipe out the HIV epidemic in this country. But because people face high drug costs and because of uh, the types of um, maneuvering that providers have to go through to get drugs approved from insurers in the first place, uh, people do end up not taking their medications and then their viral load can increase and they run the risk of transmitting the virus unintentionally. So these mm -hmm. are the kinds of things that you can see on a day-to-day -day basis affect people's lives. And um, it goes back to what Trent was saying about taking a preventive approach to care in this country. And if we prioritize public health over profits, over uh, this kind of corporate approach, we could we could really uh, wipe out a lot of chronic health conditions in this country, and save millions, billions of dollars that way. Yes, agreed. Uh, Dr. Gupta, do you have something you want to add to that? Um, yeah. So, uh, to me personally, it's extremely important, uh, mainly as a provider. Um, I'm fortunate in that I have the means to to buy meds that I need, but the majority of population is not in that situation. And you know, we all went into this profession because we're we all desire to be healers in some way. And um, the inability to get your patients drugs, I think, is part of the cycle or an incentive of one of the reasons many physicians are choosing to no longer practice. Either they don't practice or you know, they choose to do a boutique practice, which caters to people that have the means to be able to buy these medicines. So you have tons and tons of super qualified physicians who should be practicing and have so much to, to offer who are no longer practicing. Um, and that list, you know, becomes longer and longer and it becomes a cycle because the same amount of money that is spent um, 
you know, on drugs. And so there's an, it, that same amount of money could like the billions that would be saved would also could also be put into other aspects of treatment that would also make the lives of doctors easier. And when I say lives easier, it's really are it's the ones who stay and who are committed to to you know fight the fight and walk the walk to make sure their patients get care. And unfortunately, it often feels like we're on a battlefield, you know, um, trying to get our patients care. So I think it's extremely important. And you know, from the provider standpoint, many people I've, I've watched too many of my brilliant colleagues who are just throwing their hands up in the air and um, you know throwing in the towel and just closing their doors. So that's a problem too. Yeah. I think uh, echoing Dr. Gupta, I think it is a battlefield. Um, mm -hmm. I know so many physicians mm -hmm. in New York and it's become a matter of pride to say, we don't take health insurance because it's too big of an effort. I mean, the, it, you have to have a whole back office just to fight. Um, and I, I want to preface, I am a capitalist. I firmly believe in capitalism, but this isn't fair. I am a, you know, I'm a severe asthmatic. When I take my medicine, it says it's a miracle. I'm not asthmatic. I, I ran marathons. It's really a miracle because when I was a kid, it was bad. But the minute I, I forget it for a day or two, wow, it comes roaring back. And in general, most people, you know, if you're not on medication now, you probably will be at some point in your life. And, you know, we should at least get to negotiate as well as every other country in the world. Uh, we're hostage to lobbyists and that's silly. I, I don't think that good health care is really the focus of what's happening. I think it's a game that's rigged and, you know, you can't win unless you're a very, very large company and can sway, you know, you have a financial impact to say, I, we want this, we want that. But the rest of us have no, no power. Mm. Well, uh, on the heels of all of those comments, you have all pointed out some really key reasons why we at Citizen Action, along with all of you, have taken our plea to Facebook today. We encounter and work with everyday New Jerseyans who are struggling and making decisions that are compromising their health and well being, not only of them individually, but if COVID taught us nothing, when people don't take care of their own health, the entire community suffers. So, this is a public health issue. It is an issue of equity. We need to ensure that everyone who needs medication will be able to get the prescription drugs they need. And that is why we are urging every member of our New Jersey delegation to support President Biden's Build Back Better plan and the inclusion of Medicare drug price negotiations that will apply to everyone. We cannot allow it to be limited only to Medicare and give pharmaceutical companies a way to pass on the added costs to other employers or to those who are, who are insured in other programs. We need every member of Congress to stand with us in this fight to put patients above profits and ensure everyone has access to the drugs they need to get and stay healthy. As Trent said, every one of us at some point will need prescription drugs to maintain our health. And every vote will count, but most especially in the Senate. We cannot afford to lose one of our senators in that vote to ensure that this passes and that we have finally, after years of unfair and excessive price gouging, fair prescription drug prices. That is why New Jersey Citizen Action today 
along with 42 other partner organizations from across New Jersey, is releasing a letter to Senator Bob Menendez, who has yet to commit to joining his colleagues in supporting a comprehensive package to lower drug prices through Medicare negotiation and ensure that that greater affordability for drugs will be available to all families, regardless of how they get their insurance. Senator Menendez has long been a champion of expanding access to health coverage. He has been a defender of the Affordable Care Act, and we need him with us to stand strong and be a champion to take this across the finish line because drugs don't work if people can't afford them. And we need all of our citizens to be able to access the healthcare and the prescription drugs they need. This is a win-win for all of us. We need these measures because they're essential to protecting the health of individuals and communities and the financial stability not only of our families and patients, seniors, workers, businesses, and employers, but also the stability of our health system that is too often strained by people who avoid taking care of their health because of the high cost of prescription drugs. And like you heard from Dr. Gupta and Dr. Bagchi, end up needing more expensive and emergency care in our emergency departments. With your support, Senator Menendez, Senator Booker, and all of our New Jersey representatives, Americans will finally receive much needed relief from exorbitant prescription drug prices. It is our plea to you to stand firm and to ensure that we pass a robust package that includes this provision. And we will need all of you listening today and those of you who will join us over the next month to stand with us and urge our members to do what is right by New Jerseyans and the American people to lower prescription drug prices now. New Jerseyans deserve nothing less. With that, we thank you all for joining us today and we invite you to like New Jersey Citizen Actions social media pages, join us on the web, join Families USA, Doctors for America, Small Business for America's Future, and Latino Action Network to do all we can to lower prescription drug prices. Thank you so much for joining us today. Goodbye.